Hey everyone, my name is Roy. And in today's recording, I'll be showing how you can load test a GraphQL API using K6. For this, we'll be using a repository that you can find on this URL that you can find in the description of this video and a GraphQL API, of course. First, you can go to GitHub and copy paste First, you can go to GitHub and find the repository Steps and GraphQL Benchmark. In this repository, you can find a simple setup using K6 that you can already start running by just installing K6 from Brew. If you are on macOS, of course. If you're on Linux or Windows, you can go to the installation guide of K6 and find out how to install it for your system. The API we'll be using today is built using Steps and GraphQL Studio. In Steps and GraphQL Studio, you can find all sorts of APIs that are being GraphQLized. You can also find combinations of GraphQLized APIs. This will make it easier for you to mix and match data from different APIs using GraphQL. What I'll be using today is the local currency by IP combination. This combines the free Frankfurter API that will help you getting conversion for currencies and the IP API, which will get you an IP, of course. It also generated some sample queries, but we'll not be using every one of those today. I'll just be using this one to get your IP address using IP API, and then get your local currency using Frankfurter API. From the Frankfurter API alone, we also will be getting the currency conversion. And this converts Great Britain Pound to Euros. As I'm in Europe, Amsterdam, it's quite easy to do this conversion because, well, London is more closer than you think. So Great Britain pounds to euros, and then also get my IP address, which is from Amsterdam, and then convert Great Britain pounds to euros. If I want to run any of those queries, I can just press run, an example to Frankfurter. So this will convert one Great Britain pound to euros. So one Great Britain pound is almost a euro and 20 cents, but I can also do this based on my IP. By running this query, so this will get my IP address first, it shows my location, so Amsterdam, Netherlands, even latitude and longitude for those people that really like topography. And then of course, the same conversion from GBP to Euros again. And these APIs are actually this API with these two queries is what I'll be using for my load test. So in VS Code, I've cloned the repository I showed you before, and I also installed K6 using Brew, as I'm working on macOS, of course. If you're working on something else, make sure to go to the K6 docs and find how to set up K6 for your own system. There's a lot of information here about how to run the benchmark, an example, which we can copy paste. Now, if I will be going to the file index.js, you can find some setups here. You can find Google, you can find Yahoo, you can find HTTP bin. And these are connections you can use as a comparison. So you want to compare the GraphQL API maybe to some well-known and reliable services. But today we'll just be using the steps and version endpoint, which we create for every deployed account. And we'll be using two different sets of queries. So steps and light and steps and heavy. So the light query will be a simple one. An example, the one we saw that converts GBP to euros. And then the heavier one can be the query that takes that takes your current your IP and then converts GBP to your local currency, which in my case is euros again. And then in targets you can define which you, which connections you want to load test. So let's load test steps and version. And the command to just copy paste it will run ten virtual users for thirty seconds. But let's make it 10, as I don't want you watching this video all day. But this will start K6. It will start sending requests to the steps and version endpoint for a duration of 10 seconds using 10 virtual users, as you can see here. Then it gives you all sorts of information. It basically also showed you it was successful. It showed you the amount of data received and sent. It will give you information about the HTTP request, such as the TLS handshake. But we'll also give you information about the target. And the target was the steps and version endpoint. As you can see, K6 has done 759 requests with an average speed of 125 milliseconds. 
And then you can see the two most important variables actually here are P90 and P95. 95 means 95% 95 of all requests were 140 milliseconds or below, which is a good number. But of course, I want to do more complicated things. So let's get one of our queries from Steps and GraphQL Studio and place them inside, inside this load test. So let's take our GraphQL endpoint. And then also take our query, which is the Frankfurter queries that we'll be running first, which is this query you can see right here that converts GBP to euros. And then we'll be pasting it here and just save. I don't need to provide an API key because all the API URLs that are generated to Steps and GraphQL Studio are public. If you want to use uh, this API privately with a header authentication, of course, you can install you can install the Steps and CLI, sign up for an account, and then just deploy the same API right from your own account. But now I haven't done that. I have created a Steps and Light target, which I also will be adding here because then, of course, I can test it against Steps and Version target that we just used before. I can run it again, again with 10 virtual users for 10 seconds. And let's see if it can do more requests than it did before. I think it was 7.59 before, and we probably will get pretty close again. So you can see it has 714 requests this time, uh, 351 against the query we just inserted to convert GBP to euros and 363 against the steps and version. As you see, both have the weight of one and the number of requests were pretty close. And then if you look at the numbers, also the average count is quite similar, while also the P95 counts are also quite similar. So still 95% of all requests were below 200 milliseconds for these 10 virtual users, of course. But now let's spice things up a bit and get the more heavy query in here. So this will not call one data source, but two data sources. It will first call the IP API to get your IP, and then it will call the Frankfurter API to convert your local currency to GBP, which in my case is euros. So let's run this query, see what it will do. So this is the query we'll be running. We don't need to copy the endpoint anymore because the endpoint is the same as for our previous query. And we can insert it in steps and heavy. Then we can take the endpoint we saw before, which is this one. And again, we don't need to provide an API key because this API is public. And of course, before we save it, we also need to set the weight to one. So now we're testing against three different URLs. We're just testing against steps and version, which is the default REST API URL from Stepsend to get the current version you're running on. And then we test against two queries, one query to convert GBP to Euro and another query that will take your IP and then convert your local currency to GBP. Then when I run K6 run, then again, I can run it for 10 seconds. Of course, I can also change it to 30 if we start feeling, feeling funky later on. This probably can do, well, almost the same amount of requests. And again, they will be splitted against the three different APIs we're calling. So we're calling the more heavy one, which has 228, 2029 for the lighter query, and then 225 for the version endpoint. As you can see, the numbers are all quite close. And the steps in heavy call actually seems faster than the light one, which is interesting. Of course, we can try running again against 30 seconds. See what will happen if we add or um, if we add more requests, because we still be using 10 virtual users, but this time we'll be uh, taking more time. So we have more time to set more requests, which might impact the speed of any of the endpoints are actually not the endpoints because the GraphQL endpoint is the same, only the query we'll be sending is different. 
We're almost there. We're a few more seconds to go. And the nice thing with load testing is um, you can do it as often as you want. It's often advised to do it often. So every time you change your queries, you may be inserting new data sources. It can be useful to run, um, to run a performance test again. As you can see, it's still quite fast. It actually is showing to be a bit faster because we also implement some caching, of course, but still the request seems stable. So the average requests are all well below 130 milliseconds. And then 95% of all requests were also below 150 milliseconds. And there are way more things you can test here, but for this, it's most important to try it out with your own GraphQL API endpoints. So if you're already running a GraphQL API, not with StepSend, but with somewhere else, you can just go into this file in this GraphQL benchmark repository and then swap out any of these details with your own. So this can be replaced with your own GraphQL query. This can be replaced with your own authentication method. And this can be replaced with a GraphQL API running somewhere completely, completely different. So this is how you load test a GraphQL API using K6. Of course, there's much more to explain. So make sure to follow our YouTube channel and subscribe to it to make sure to get all the latest information about StepSend, but most of all about GraphQL. And with this, I like to end and I hope to see you soon.